okay, great. Well, um, thank you everyone for being here this evening. My name's Kate Retstadt. I'm the Assistant Director of Employer Relations in the Career Center. And I work with the arts, communication and media career community. So some of you um, may have met with me for coaching appointments in the past. And um, my colleague Leslie here will introduce herself. Um, hi, I'm Leslie Goldberg. I know many of you. I see a lot of familiar, uh, familiar names and faces. Um, and I am the internship director at the Film and Media Studies program at Tufts. Um, and so I help students um, find internships. And um, if you're taking the internship class, I'm the professor. And then I also help um, with career advice in the media fields as well. A lot and work closely with Kate on that. Yes. Okay. So great. So Leslie will be moderating the panel. That will run until 645. Um, and so then at that point, we are going to, we'll take a short break. Um, so maybe, you know, you can get some water, take a break, and then we'll come back. And at seven, we will open our um, breakout room so that all of you can meet with the uh, 26 employers, artists, Tufts alums, volunteers who came here tonight to meet with you as well. Um, uh, one quick announcement that I did have, let's enable this live transcript, hold on. One quick announcement that I did have is if um, uh, some of you know about the herd, I'd encourage you to join. We started a new arts um, group where we'll be posting jobs for artists, creatives, things that necessarily wouldn't fit in Handshake. So I'd encourage you to join that. It's called the Arts, Entertainment, and Media Network Group. And um, I know Willa will be putting the link for our panelists, but we should just go ahead and get started mm -hmm. and, and let Leslie start um, the, the panel. Okay, great. Well, welcome everybody. I'm really excited to have our five awesome panelists here tonight, all of whom are Tufts alums, most of whom were students in my class or at some point in my office with me. So it uh, just goes to show that many of you may sit down with me and five or 10 years down the road, you might be called back to be a panelist. You never know. So um, I'm going to do less talking and I'm going to let these guys really introduce themselves and talk. Um, so first we'll do some introductions. Um, I do have a series of questions for the panelists. Um, we're going to hold any questions from the participant, the students in the Zoom, just in the interest of time, but also in the breakout rooms. Um, you, if there's a panelist that you really want to talk to, you will have that opportunity in the breakout rooms. Okay, so um, first we're just going to have each person's going to introduce themselves, talk a little bit about um, what they do, what maybe what they you majored in at Tufts, and what you're doing now, and then we'll get into the, the more specifics. So um, Akeen, you want to start? You're the first one on my, on my uh, group shot here. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Leslie. Um, good, good evening, everyone. My name is Akeen Famarmikos. I was class of 2016 uh, at Tufts, where I was a political science ma uh, major with a minor in the film and media studies um, program. And I now currently work at Adobe as an implementation specialist. Um, with this uh, company called Frame.io that was recently acquired by Adobe. It is a uh, collaborative media um, tech company that essentially helps really connect uh, as a connected tissue across all different platforms of the industry. Uh, prior to that, I was working and still currently am a part of the IATSE uh, union uh, as a freelance camera operator. And then before then, I was working actually in the creative field, both doing creative development um, for studios and production companies uh, in Hollywood for something called Mass Appeal Productions. And then also first job out of college was for WME, which is the agency route. So I've kind of gone through a couple different stages of the creative fields and I've now worked my way into this little niche tech role, um, which has been pretty amazing. And I'm you know happy to be here. Thanks for uh, having me. Great, thank you so much. Um, Maya, you're next on my screen, <laughs> Maya Blackstone. 
Hi everyone, I'm Maya. I graduated Tufts in 2017 and I majored in film and media studies, which was a new major when I was a student and from what I understand now is super popular, but I was actually in the first class of film and media studies graduates and then I also double majored in drama. Um, after graduation, I worked at New York One News, which is um, kind of a local affiliate in New York City, and that was a really interesting job because I majored in film but actually had no experience with a camera, so I was kind of like sent out every day with a camera um, to film my own segments, um, and I also graduated from Columbia Journalism School. Um, so decided to get a master's. And then after that, I worked at the New York Times for two years um, doing video news um, on their core digital team. Um, and now I am a producer at CNN Plus, which just launched this week. Um, and I'm working on a brand new interview show, which is really cool to start something from, from the ground. That's awesome, Maya, thank you. Um, Allie, you're up next, Allie Berman. Hi everyone, I'm Allie Berman. Uh, I graduated from Tufts in 2009 with a, a major in English and a minor in film studies. At the time, it was not an opportunity to major in anything in the media field. Um, I am. Uh, I live in Los Angeles, California with my husband and our two and a half year old daughter. And I am a partner at United Talent Agency and I run our digital talent division where we're representing um, some of the top creators out there from all the different platforms, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, you name it. Um, and I'm excited to talk to you guys today. A lot, of, a lot of where I am today, I can attribute to my time at Tufts and that being the start of my journey. So excited to spend some time together. Great, Allie, thank you so much. Um, next, Meredith. Hi everyone, my name is Meredith Turritz. I graduated in 09 uh, with philosophy, um, communications and media studies, which it was back then. Um, and then also a concentration in photography from the museum school. Um, I am currently the editor of BBC Work Life, which is one of the features verticals of the BBC. Um, before that, I worked at um, Elle magazine, uh, Glamour magazine. I'm a founder of Bustle and the Bustle Digital Group, um, and then sort of popped around starting up some new uh, properties at Time Inc., and, which is now Meredith. Um, so I've been in digital publishing my entire career. Excellent. Thank you. And last but not least, Amanda. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Amanda. I graduated Tufts in 2019. I double majored in history and sociology, and now I am a senior business analyst at Gupta Media. We're a digital advertising agency based in Copley Square. I'm in person right now, um, which is fun. Um, primarily, we're working with a variety of different types of brands, music labels. We got our start with Disney Music Group, um, Universal Music Group. Now, primarily, I work with brands like Amazon, Amazon Books, Amazon Publishing, Fender, Fender Play, um, and Country Music Hall of Fame. So a variety of different clients, different goals, um, very busy, but it's very fun. Great. Thank you. We have such a nice variety of panelists. And actually, Amanda, I'm going to start with you. Um, you kindly volunteered to, to answer, speak to this question, which is um, to talk about the various jobs in the industry um, and what the kinds of skills that you think students need to get those jobs and just give us a sense of like all the different tracks that you can can go in. And of course, the rest of you feel free to raise your hand if you wanna jump in on that question, so. Yeah, I think advertising is really interesting because everybody needs advertising in order to grow their business. So there's a lot of different entry points um, I primarily started at this company doing a lot of music advertising, but even at the same company since then, I've translated to a lot of different brand advertising, a lot of book advertising, um, surprisingly. So in advertising, you can kind of pick your lane. What do you want to advertise for? Do you want a big company, a small company? Do you want to work for one company? Do you want to work at an agency like I do and work for hundreds of different clients? But also what I do is media buying. So I am buying ads on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, TikTok, but there needs to be creative and design. We need to create the ads. So if you wanted to make the images, assets, the videos, that's a lane into advertising. 
We need tons of data analytics and analysis. So we have a whole strategy and a data team. So if you're more interested in the engineering, the coding, the um, analysis side of things, that's definitely a huge aspect of advertising. And then we also have a finance division. We have an engineering division. So I think advertising as an industry, you might think it's just one lane. You might think it's just my job, which is buying ads on Facebook, but it actually touches a variety of different um, fields. And it also touches a variety of different starting points. So obviously history and sociology doesn't lean right into advertising, but what it did teach me was how do people think, how to write, how to look at data and kind of come up with a distinct viewpoint. And that kind of led me into this job where I have to find people, target people, and then look at the results, tell the client, how did it do? What can we do to improve? So advertising as a whole is a really growing industry, specifically digital, ind digital advertising. So if you have any questions, definitely let me know, but there's a lot of ways you can get into it. Great, thank you. Any of our other panelists, Meredith? Sure, so I'm coming at this from a journalism perspective. Um, when a lot of people think about journalism, they think about just writing and there are a million different paths in. Um, there's writing and there's editorial, uh, first, which are, which are different. I began as a writer and then have started at, um, got tracked as an editor. So you can be doing the actual composition of the stories, but you can also be uh, working with the writers directly in editing. And then there are subsections of that too. So I'm a features editor. That means I don't do breaking news. Um, I have done it in the past. It's not my forte. Um, you can do long form and short form in editorial. Um, when you are writing, you can be an investigative journalist. You can be um, a video journalist or a multimedia journalist. You can um, be what's called a service journalist. So like all the pieces you see of like how to do X, Y, Z, that's service journalism. There's affiliate journalism where like you look at a publication like The Strategist or The Wire Cutter. Um, those, that's all, um, they make affiliate revenue from that. Every time you purchase something from that, um, the, the link that they, that you purchase from, they get revenue from. So that's called affiliate and commerce journalism. So basically you can choose a path as a writer or an editor um, or as a social media editor or or, you know, again, like engineering and photography research and things like that. Um, and then there are like these deep specializations within it. So you can kind of choose to go like an inch wide or a mile deep, depending on um, kind of the way you want to approach it. Yeah. And I'd like to tap onto that too, because I also work in journalism, but I want to remind you all that there's a ton of different mediums in which to approach journalism. And my forte is video. And, you know, I did video for a print publication with the New York Times. You never would associate that with video, uh, but there is like a really growing video team and people want to digest content on social media in the form of videos. They want to, you know, these really quick kind of like digestible forms that you see at the top of, um, you know, articles. Um, and now I work for a streaming service, which I think is kind of the next frontier in digital journalism, um, because people are not tuning into cable news in the way that, you know, their parents or their grandparents generations did. And so I think, um, you know, streaming is a big thing. And then I also just want to say, if you, you know, want to you know, write or report. Um, there's a lot of opportunities at like cable networks to do that. Um, CNN has a huge digital team. Um, so they're writing articles and, and it's not just video. Great, thank you. Um, I'd like to just briefly jump back to Meredith um, to comment on what about writing and anybody else who wants to jump in on this. What about writing in other industries? So if a student really likes to write um, and, but you know, maybe is intimidated by, <laughs> you know, a newspaper or the New York Times or CNN, like where, where could they get their start? Sure, I think beyond being intimidated by publications that are like prestige or legacy publications, whatever you want to call them, them. Um, not everyone rent, wants to write for one. Um, I actually spent quite a bit of time writing as a managing editor, uh, both writing and editing as a managing editor at um, a finance website. Um, it was a finance startup that focused on small business. And I actually did a contract as a writer at JP Morgan as well. So there are a million different places. Um, you probably have heard the words content marketing. If you haven't and you're a writer and you're interested in it, look up content marketing. But basically, businesses across all sectors, whether they're tech, 
finance, um, media themselves, communications, anything. Um, a lot of their lead gen strategy and sort of the way they've built their brand is through what they call content. Um, so that could be internal blogs, newsletters, white papers, guidebooks, whatever that looks like. And so you can pair what you're interested in um, into content um, at either a small organization or a large organization. Um, so when you're looking for those jobs, um, there's both writer, editor, but there's also content, which is something that you might want to focus on if you're not looking at like journalism with a capital J. Great. Yeah. And then, yeah, piggyback off that as well. Um, from the Hollywood perspective, uh, working in like the agency route, uh, from WME, and I guess UTA definitely probably speaks to this as well. Um, there's this thing, when you're there working for an agent and working in that in that room, you are literally at the, at the forefront of the content coming into like scripts and you know pitches and et cetera. So you can really be um, pivotal in terms of like giving your influence and perspective on the creative process at that level. And what's really great at those uh, larger agencies too, is that when you're in the mailroom and you have such uh, you know, a wide grasp of touch points, you're really able to position yourself into where you want to be next. So, you know, you either can be the, um, you know, a, a lead a career in the agency world and become a partner agent, in the digital team, shout out to Ali over here, but in general, you can also, um, you know, pivot after a year or two, like I did in some ways and really find yourself in the more creative vein where you get to really be a part of the nitty gritty of um, content where you can really help, um, uh, I guess, be influential with a script coverage or um, a, a draft of an HBO show when I was at the, at the HBO for a while. So there's some really interesting ways you can you can leave your mark and creative style in just the, the writing form. Yeah, and just to add on that, I, I recognize in my intro, I didn't really talk through my, my career trajectory uh, or journey, but um, I only know the agency side of the business. Um, my first job um, after graduating from Tufts was at another agency where I spent just shy of uh, three years there. And then in a very like, you know, entourage meets Jerry Maguire-esque moment, um, left with the agent that I was working for um, and followed him followed him as his assistant to UTA. And it was at UTA that I, you know, discovered, you know, my passion for the digital space before digital was even really a thing. This was, I'm really, really aging myself now, um, but you already know the year I graduated, so I can't do much worse than that. Um, but this was before Instagram um, was even a platform. And it was really just a place to, the, the internet was really a place to discover, you know, original voices and, you know, figure out where in Hollywood and entertainment you can, you can take them. Um, but, you know, to what Akeen said, I think, you know, in, in, on the Hollywood side of things, the advice that was always given to me that, which was, you know, regardless of any internships or courses I took or life experience that I had, um, you're, effectively your quote unquote graduate degree in entertainment is really working at starting and working at an agency um, because you're just at the epicenter of entertainment um, and you're it, it, not only the epicenter, but sitting on, you know, all of the information and all of it's just, it's really like the nucleus of, of Hollywood. Um, and um, I, I initially had the intention of starting at an agency because I thought I wanted to be a producer um, I had a couple uh, experience, internships throughout college, which I can touch on in a later question, um, thanks to my, my time at Tufts and my connection to Tufts. Um, and I thought, you know, the producing route made a lot more sense to me. I always considered myself a creative person. Um, I was... Uh, I considered myself a nice person. Um, I, and just those kind of things just didn't really, uh, that picture wasn't painted for me in terms of the agency world at the time. This is when Entourage, which was a show on HBO, for those of you that have never heard of it, was at its height. Um, and I didn't really see myself fitting into that environment. Um, but yeah, so I started at an agency with the intention of going and producing and fell in love with it and was able to kind of take, put my own spin on it and have never left. Great, thank you. And so, Amanda, I'm just going to um, throw a question, a, a curveball at you. Can you speak? I know you've only been in, you know, an agency a short time compared to Ali, but um, can you speak to uh, the agency work that you're doing in terms of how you, you know, it might be a launch pad for for you, for other students? And then, Ali, we'll go back to you about the internship question. Yeah, and I think I think it's important to know that, like, agency, it's. It's obviously uh, one word that has a lot of different meetings and especially mm -hmm. a lot of different meetings in the field of entertainment. Yeah. Um, 
and, and media, or just, yeah, entertainment and media. Um, so, you know, Amanda's, uh, the, the side of the table that Amanda's sitting on is very different from the side of the table that I'm sitting on and our agencies right. are in, in no way overlap each other. Right. Yeah. I think yeah, with um, the advertising agency world, probably similar um, to other agencies, what makes it unique and a great place to start is because you're not working with one client. You are working with so many different sides of other people's business. I also had no experience really with advertising coming in, um, at least in terms of like the nitty gritty, how to, how to build in Facebook, like what is an impression? Like I was starting at like square one. So working at an agency gave me kind of a crash course into advertising um, and what it was, how to be a part of this industry. What am I actually doing at this job? Um, the first six months here was basically like school. Um, I had lessons every day. I had homework, not after work, but like during work, my job was basically like practice things. And then slowly getting introduced to different clients to now three years on the job. Um, I am owning a lot of different clients myself. Um, my supervisors aren't really on it. Like I am owning it. But then there's bigger campaigns too, where there's like 15 of us working on the same campaign. Amazon Books is across... 10 different countries um, and maybe six different platforms. I can't run that myself. Um, so that is like a full team collaboration type of project. And the industry moves really fast. So I think an agency is a really great place to start because you get exposure to so many different platforms, people, projects, clients, um, especially when you don't necessarily get that hands-on type of practice in college. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go back to Ali um, and then Maya with a topic near and dear to my heart, which is how important are internships and the question I always get from students, how do I get experience if I don't have any experience? Um, so Ali, can you take that and then we'll um, pop over to Maya. Totally. So um, my internships throughout college, so I'll tell you a little bit about my story. So started at Tufts as a freshman. Um, I technically left and had, and was planning on transferring to USC. Um, and at the time my parents were living in Los Angeles. So the summer in between freshman and sophomore year where I was, I had technically taken all my stuff back from Boston and was planning on transferring. I was, um, a hostess at a restaurant and, um, um, uh, Howie Mandel, who at the time was hosting the show Deal or No Deal, walked into the restaurant um, with his wife, um, and I sat them at a table. And I said, you know, Mr. Mandel, I normally would never do this, um, but you know, I'm in between semesters right now. And I basically asked him for. He probably thought I was going to be like, can I be a model on your show? Um, and and I asked him for an internship on set, and he's like, do you have a business card? And I was like, no. I don't have a business card. I'm like 19 years old. Um, uh, but I went back and took a children's menu, wrote down my information and he's just a really incredible human being. His assistant called me a couple weeks later and I interned on the, sh on the show for a couple weeks that summer. Um, and then I ultimately decided to go back to Tufts, um, my sophomore year, uh, second semester, sophomore year. And then I attended something very similar to this as a student. Um, and it was, you know, an alum who is a producer in Hollywood in the film and the TV space. And I similarly went up to him afterwards and just asked for an internship. Um, and that was at a film and TV production company. Um, and so I think, you know, long story short, um, don't never be afraid, you know, just to hear no. Um, oh, put yourself out there and take advantage of, you know, Tufts is such a nutrient rich environment. Take advantage. I mean, which you guys, are, those of you who are here today are already doing so, but continue to take advantage of, you know, the opportunities that are there. You never know, you know, who you'll meet while you're standing in line to get your book sent. You know, I don't, you know, but, um, and then everything just happens to be gratuitous from there. So, um, don't be afraid you know, uh, and uh, take advantage of, of everything Tufts has to offer. I think that's great advice. And Maya, I know you can jump in on that as well. 
Yeah, I would really echo that. I think I got almost all of my internships through Tufts or a Tufts connection. And I really didn't know kind of what I wanted to do. I had started majoring in drama, but I always kind of knew I wanted to work in media. And I actually got a winternship. I don't know if that program still exists, but it was, yeah, it does. Okay. It was um, one week and I went to, it was called Nancy Glass Productions or Glass Productions in Philadelphia. And she makes reality TV. And I was really interested in what she did, but I kind of learned from that, you know, one week there that didn't really want to do reality TV. And I was talking to Nancy and I said, I'm really interested in news. And she said, well, my husband is the executive producer of Inside Edition, a news show on CBS. You know, if you don't want to spend the summer with me, why don't you spend it, you know, with my husband? I said, I, th I think that sounds great. And so that was really how I, how I landed that internship. And then kind of the other story I want to share is, um, you know, I would go to those big career expos. And I felt like a lot of the jobs were really geared towards people who had majored in the sciences. It, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with what's available in the Boston area. Uh, but there was this one kind of table that stood out for the Malden Observer, which was the local newspaper in Malden, Massachusetts. And I was kind of hesitant about taking it because I was like, you know, I, I haven't read the Malden Observer. I don't know where Malden, Massachusetts is. Um, but I talked to Leslie and, and I signed up for her um, semester course. And that ended up being one of the most valuable internships I had was working with the Malden Observer. And it was just me and this one editor. We would meet a couple times a week for coffee and she would take me around Malden and I got to write my own stories. And that was really something that I have even still used to this day in job interviews to kind of talk about how that local news experience, especially like hyper local news experience really shaped my career. And so I'm really thankful for Tufts for both of those internship opportunities. That's great. Can I just add one more thing? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. So two things. Um, I think toward what Maya said, it's really important to learn what you don't want to do as much as what you do want to do. So if you take what ends up being a crappy internship, like don't be like, oh, the time is lost. Be like, okay, that's really important. I don't want to do X, Y, Z. But this like one little task that I worked on for three hours was the best three hours I had all summer, something like that. So um, I, my first internship, which came through Tufts, was in a magazine that no longer exists called L Girl. It's basically like the L girl, the L version of Teen Vogue. Um, and so it was like kind of a teen magazine, which was super not my beat. Like my two favorite things in the world is our books and sports. Um, so it was a lot of fashion. It was a lot of celebrity. I knew nothing about celebrity. And I had to write these like little like 50 word celebrity briefs every day. And I had no idea what I was talking about. Um, but I got in through this world, um, you know, not only figuring out that I didn't want to write about celebrities, but, um, you know, just sort of taking this thing that I was like, oh, this doesn't match me, um, but it got me into the industry. So even if it's a subject matter that you're not totally sure you want to do, um, those foundational skills are highly, highly transferable. Um, so, you know, if it's not your dream internship, take it, it is worth it. Great. Excellent advice. And I just, Maya, just a note on the winternship pro program, not only does it still exist, but we still, we did it remotely the past two years during COVID. Nancy Glass Productions is still one of our sites and um, some of our 2022 winterns at Nancy Glass are in this Zoom tonight. So. Oh, no very, way. <laughs> and your picture, I think, is still on the website of you <laughs> at um, Nancy Glass Productions. Yeah, that um, was a great internship. Yeah, it was a great opportunity. Um, okay, so um, anybody else have have comments on that internships? Any of our other panelists? Okay, then we're gonna jump to Akeen and kind of this is a nice segue. So we talked about meeting famous people in line. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, just ask. So that leads us nicely to informational interviews. Um, so can you talk a little bit how to make the most of those and how, you know, how do you get them and what do you do once you get them? Definitely. Um, so I moved to Los Angeles. Uh, I convinced my parents that a $20 a day internship in um, uh, marketing was somehow going to you know, be worth it after school. And so they always jump in and like it was the adventure. It was the surprise. It was the funness of trying to be from New York City, going to Boston for school, then L.A., like, you know, new new frontier. And while in LA, I was able to meet 
a producer and after just a really informal conversation that turned to like uh, everything from like a three hour conversation of like my upbringing, his background, just being me great people. Uh, he put me in touch with um, a partner agent at WME who then got me an informational interview. And so again, serendipity, now we're in the room. Um, I'm dressed in jeans and a button up. And so just purely under underdressed for the, uh, the uh, under undertaking. And you go in and you're just hoping to have a conversation. And you're just hoping to, um, you know, leave an impression, but more or less just understand where they where like your entity where the company is and where you can hopefully leave an impact or what their what their scope is um and it was one of those places where when you lead with confidence but also humility you know you you uh strive to leave an impression but um always be ready for like the smallest task so you can eventually get like the largest responsibility that was really one of the things that probably put me as a standout candidate in that instance because i was offered a job from there so you never really know what's going to happen um even when you are underdressed but uh, you know, you you are all tough students. We are all people that come from a great background of alumni networks, and there is a lot of pedigree behind your degree. Um, we are intelligent. We are hardworking. We are those that can be industry leaders in what we do. Um, so always approach each opportunity as truly the opportunity of like either a contact, a handshake, or really could be you know a lifelong mentor. Because some of those mentors from WME are still people in my role. That's why like we'll talk to you about aging myself as if I'm old old but you know cell phone and like you know my contact list in terms of like when I'm trying to make a decision I'll hit them up and say so where are we going and that woman who interviewed me from an informational interview who then gave me a job or still like you know she's moving on to Bloomberg and we still have con connections so those instances are never too small um, especially at a school everyone is young bright and hungry and if you keep that but also the competitive edge that got you into Tufts that's what really will set you apart there Great. And none of you are as old as me. Um, <laughs> Amanda, I saw you nodding. Do you have some something to add about the, you know, the networking and the informational interview side of things? Yeah, I think on my end, um, I know you're thinking about that in terms of like getting your first job, um, but I think it's important to continue that even after you've gotten your first job. Like this year, one of my big goals for 2022 was to increase female mentorship in my field, because obviously the only job I've ever had since college is this job. So I have a lot of colleagues at this job, but I don't really have a lot of colleagues outside of my job in the broader industry. So I've been um, kind of cold messaging a lot of people on LinkedIn, um, who I have maybe one connection, two connections um, with either it's like my, like my boss or my boss's boss, um, just to kind of get my foot in the door with them. And just kind of asking like, hey, one of my goals this year is to talk to more women in my industry. Um, do you have time for like a 10 minute Zoom call just to kind of talk about your career and how you got there? Um, and I think when you guys are looking for a job, that's also a totally OK thing to do. Um, I have gotten a lot of messages on LinkedIn from Tufts students. Um, definitely feel free to do that after this, too. Um, I'm happy to talk about more in-depth one on one my career um, advice I have and just trying to get your foot in the door for those informational interviews that Akeem was talking about, because maybe that will actually lead to an opportunity. But if it doesn't, you're a little bit more comfortable talking to somebody about your goals, what you're looking for, and you get to know maybe what you don't want also. So talking to people is definitely step one, um, and you never know where it'll go. Yeah, I just want to say I got my first job after graduation from a cold message on LinkedIn to a Tufts alum, Josh Robin, who worked at New York One, and it was just an informational interview. I just wanted to learn what was New York One, and by the end of the call, he said, you know, why don't you contact my boss? And actually, I had applied like months before and not gotten a response, and then connecting with him, I, I got through to an interviewer right away, and so I think like never underestimate the power of, of, of a cold LinkedIn message, and feel free to message me as well yeah i agree um you know people ask me how my tufts experience was and obviously it was great but what i always say is the experience after has actually been even better and more meaningful because of the alumni network um and people want to help you i mean like akeem said the the name on our degree um is really meaningful we didn't go to a sixteen thousand, you know person school where like 
you know, every third person, you know, went to that school. We went to a really small school. We chose it for that reason. Um, and so when you connect with someone who also went to Tufts, you know that they share values and they know what kind of person you are. They know, you know, you have a certain perspective on the world. You value certain things. You are hard, young, hardworking, young and hungry, um, like Akeem said. And so, um, you should feel already connected to that person. The worst thing that will happen is they don't return your your message, your email, your LinkedIn. And like of the bad things that can happen, that's really not a terrible thing. So reach out, you know, understand that like the network is really, really important and lean on it. Use it a lot. Great. Yeah. And I use that line all the time. What's the worst thing that can happen? They just won't answer you. Um, Ali, I knew you had a couple of thoughts on tools and strategies on this topic as well. I think, you know, it's it's interesting, right? Because, you know, going to a school like Tufts, at least at the time that I went, I went to Tufts, um, almost everybody knew they were going either down the medical path or the legal path or some sort of graduate school path. And so, you know, the few of us that wanted you to do something a bit more creative in the arts or in media, um, there was no real playbook for that. Um, but I actually think that worked to our advantage because, you know, unlike, you know, an interview on, you know, the medical side, um, or, you know, the, uh, you know, like a medical interview or a legal interview, or even, you know, like a financial interview, it's so much about what's on your transcript and where you went to college and where you went to graduate school. Um, but in the arts, it's really about what's, what do you have to say? You know, what's your point of view on the world? Um, what, what kind of content do you like to consume? What are you passionate about? What interesting stories do you have? Um, and while it, you know, it's only four years of your life, you have the opportunity to take the craziest, um, most experimental, you know, type classes that can ultimately help develop what this point of view and what this voice is of yours, you know? So when you're in an interview and you can say, I, I you know, somebody asks you a question and you can connect it back to, you know, you'd never taken an art class in your life, but for one semester, you took a ceramics class because you wanted to, you know, that just shows that you're not afraid to literally roll up your sleeves and, you know, learn and experience different parts of the world and, and challenge different parts of your brain. And, you know, for me as a leader, you know, at a, at a talent agency, not only am I looking for that in, you know, my, my clients, but I'm looking for that in my colleagues too. I want people who are going to come to the table and, you know, have crazy stories to tell because uh, we're in a storytelling business, right? And never be afraid to roll up their sleeves and try something new. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's great. And that segues beautifully into my question about being creative. I mean, you talked about, you know, stories and being passionate. And I think for a lot of the students, I'm certainly the media students, and I know there's art students in this, in this Zoom as well. And so, uh, I think it's important to talk about, you know, creativity and how do you apply creativity and what kinds of creative skills, you know, how do you leverage those skills and how do you use them in the job? And so for that, we're going to start with Akeen and then we'll go to Meredith, because I know both of you had thoughts on that question. Yeah, thanks. Um, so after spending about two years in the business side of the agency route, um, I realized I really want to be more in the creative world and at least dip my toe in that. So um, the first thing you I found was the like creative development field outside of an agency. So that's really where you're trying to, um, you know, take an idea and a concept of a show, a movie, whatever it is, and then bring it to fruition and ideally, hopefully bring it to, you know, a really, you know, amazing piece of content. So um, there are many ways to, uh, to, to, to be a part of that journey. Um, I, at first, I, again, I was in the, you know, the creative room, the, like more of the script coverage, more of like the um the larger scope of the picture and then i realized that from there personally i really enjoyed being on set and like that was my favorite part of the the actual physical production aspect of you know being with an actor being with the director and making you know having to real-time problem solve for everything from the nuance of like um a weather shifting a lens so therefore you had to defog it in the middle of a rainstorm type of mindset to um having to uh, work around the pandemic and um, really deal with, you know, zones A through C and how do you like keep six feet apart and not kill each other. 
uh, you know, in, in most uh, non grotesque way. So there are many different ways of creatively trying to execute and do it within um, a way that still allows you to be expressive. Because when I was, and still am, but, you know, doing my film and like TV productions, and you're actually behind the camera, you take pride in being the eyes of the movie, right? Like what you see and what you choose to point your lens at is what everyone who gets to be a part of your journey sees eventually, right? And so that onus and that that power behind it was really, really amazing and a thrill. And it's like a performance, you know, I played football at Tufts. Um, I had a lot of different performers here between drama and dance and everything. Like when you're on that stage, you cannot mess up. And if you mess up, you will, you know, you'll be ridiculed for it. So there's a sense of pressure and I still get goosebumps thinking about it. And that's what really allows you to still have the juice to do, to do all the hardship that goes with it. Ship, I said hardship, by the way. Um, so in general, you really, uh, there's a lot to it and there's a lot to the creative field that allow you to really be impactful. Um, and with, you know, the, the expanding digital sphere of, you know, streamers or just in general, like, as we said before, the content and video production of like, um, you know, New York Times and all these like, you know, media streams and, you know, CNN Plus, obviously it's huge. There are many ways you can be impactful in these realms that you wouldn't normally think of as, as jobs and positions. And they are great jobs. They are high paying. They are great benefits. They will keep you on your toes and you will travel the world. I've been um, to South Africa uh, for shoots. I've been up and down the, you know, Americas and the coast, coast to coast, everywhere. Um, and there are many different ways you can, you can create an amazing life for you. So, I'm now currently working remotely for Adobe, which is a whole different field of greatness that I love. Um, but there, in terms of the creative aspect of even that job, where uh, even though I'm an implementation specialist, which is much more client-based, I'm kind of doing demonstrations of my company's software for creative clients. I still work with the physical production of Frame.io. So when we make civil reels to uh, showcase like a really cool new tech that we're like displaying, I get to still be a part of that creative field as well. So even with a tech company, there are production entities that you can really be a part of that are you know pretty impactful. And with that, you impact the culture. And um, it's 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 a great job. It's um, you know allows you to be comfortable and also still be creative. And so just never never think that the position that normally you would feel isn't yours doesn't have the entity that you want to be. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you, Akeen. Um, Meredith, you have some thoughts on creativity in this world? <laughs> Do I? Um, I was just going to say basically that I can draw a pretty straight line between uh, what I did at the museum school to uh, my day job. Um, we do a lot of photo research. So every piece that we run has two to three to four photos in it. Um, and it's a lot of time on Getty images and, you know, pick, you know, insert stock service here. Um, and so every single um, job I've worked at, I've had a massive advantage because I've had a photo editing background. Um, you know, I know my way around Photoshop. Um, I did my, my senior, senior thesis in photojournalism, but also um, just having a sense of like, what's going to play really well as a small thumb on a homepage versus a, you know, a large, um, you know, hero image for something. So there, you know, there are pure photo editing jobs if you're like, uh, or like um, being a photo editor where you're like literally selecting the, the photo assets for articles, um, or you can take that, you know, artistic, like, concentration you have or course you did or background and draw a pretty straight line to day-to-day um, -day tasks. Great, excellent, thank you. Um, anybody else have, I don't see any other raised hands on that. Okay, so we are <coughs> almost at the end of our panel portion. Um, so I would like to um, ask each of our panelists if you had one piece of advice for students, um, what would it be? And why don't we just start with Akeen, because you're, you're first on my screen, and then um, we'll go around. So one piece of advice, sure. what would it be? Uh, take the plunge. Really just go on a whim. Um, if you fall, you fall on your face, and you get back up. Um, I've fallen many times, and I've risen one more time since that fall, right? So you can really especially when you're young, you know, um, you can always rebound. It's not the end of the world. You will be okay. Um, again, you have a tough degree, you have a network, you have family, friends, et cetera. Uh, try everything you possibly can and you'll find the thing that really makes you want to be great. Um, and that's, that's, that's the goal, right? In life is to find what drives you to be happy every day. And I feel like, especially both at work and as well as the rest of your life. And it's really just a way of saying yes to things. 
Great. Uh, Maya. I would say don't limit yourself. I think in today's day and age, we have this like, I don't know, like kind of like cultural push that you should like focus on one thing or choose like one career path. And I think that, you know, nobody in this industry has one linear career path. And I think like, you know, for our generation, like people will find like a million different jobs. And so I think when you kind of like say like, I'm only going to be like a digital video journalist, you can kind of limit yourself in that way. So I think like when you're early in your career, like all of you all are now, just don't pick one thing to focus on, kind of think about like a broad spectrum of areas of your interest and kind of look look for jobs there. And yeah, I think also your first job does not have to be your last job. And that's really important to think about as you're looking for your first job. And, you know, I think that you can, you know, find a variety of interests and career paths. So, you know, if, if the first job you land is in marketing, you might not market for the rest of your life. Um, so just thinking about how your career is long and, and will take you in a lot of different directions is important. Great. Thank you. Allie, one piece of advice. Um, I knew you were going to ask all of us that. I should have prepared my answer. <laughs> I can come back to you. Come if back to like. me. Okay, come back Meredith, me. you're up next. <laughs> so my piece of advice is that the most powerful word in the English language is you. Um, people really like to talk about themselves a lot. So if you go into networking or you go into a conversation, say, what do you do? What are you excited about? What brought you here? Um, and the more you can ask people about themselves, um, the more you can break down walls, you can open up and you'll learn something. So don't always think about interacting actions, um, you know, whether it's in a networking session or with a colleague or a boss or whatever it is about what you're getting in return, um, ask for people because they are more likely to give if, you know, they're letting you, letting them open themselves up to you too. Great. Uh, Amanda. Yeah, mine's not the opposite of Meredith's, but um, I think you should work on bragging about yourself. I think it's really hard to celebrate your own accomplishments and in an internship in your first job, I think a lot of people think like, okay, I just got to get it done and fly under the radar, but you're going to get a lot more out of it if you kind of stand out a little bit, if you go above and beyond and you let somebody know that you did go above and beyond. Um, so don't be shy about being humble. I think there is a time for humble and there's also a time for like confidence. So push yourself and let people know like when you do a good job and things will go your way. Allie, you ready? <laughs> you get ready. the last word, Allie. <laughs> okay, good, because I've got two pieces of advice. I'm breaking the rules. Um, the first would be um, go in there and just uh, go into any interview, go into any sort of you know employment situation and make the other person feel comfortable. You know, so many times interview you know, settings or first day work settings can be so you know, intense and formal and just plan on going in there with a story to like let some, you know, to get somebody to let their guard down or just like connect as human beings. Cause, you know, I think we're all here for a common purpose and that's because we're interested in, you know, arts and entertainment and ultimately what you, um, you know, how, how that world comes together is by connecting as people. Um, so really make an effort to connect on a human level. And the second thing I would say um, is, you know, up until this point, your your path in life has been pretty linear, right? You've gone from, you know, preschool to elementary school, or if, you know, you're international, your, you know, version of elementary school uh, to middle school, to high school, to college. And know that from this point on, not everything is as linear as it has been in your life. Um, and don't let, you know, something that might to you look like a misstep uh, become a misstep. You know, everything in life truly is gratuitous. And that was something that the president of Tufts said to me, my, you know, during senior week, my senior year, when we had lunch with him. Um, and because he was going around and asking everyone, you know, what's your job after college? And I was, again, one of the only ones that didn't have a job because in arts and entertainment, like, and especially in Hollywood, you had to be there and ready to start the job the next day. So you couldn't get a job three months out, four months out. It was just, it was too hard at the time. Um, and he said, well, listen, you know, don't, don't stress yourself out. You'll get a job. You seem confident. 
and everything from there will be gratuitous. And I really took that to heart and he, he was completely right. Wonderful. Well, I, I, I can say that I could listen to the five of you talk for <laughs> probably the rest of the night. <laughs> and I see a lot of nods from our students, but we are going to take a quick break. Um, and Kate, I'm just going to turn it over to, well, first, let me say thank you very much, of course, to our panelists. You guys were amazing. And, um, you know, I'm putting up my, uh, my clapping reaction. 